What kind of a game do you think Robert De Niro would make? A mafioso simulator? A heist thriller action adventure? A taxi driving game? Crazy taxi! I bet no one guessed a point and click adventure where you inherit Christopher Reeve's estate for uninspired artists seeking their lost muse while being guided around by Jim Belushi and Cher and having to fend off Steven Tyler and Steve Perry of the band Aerosmith. What benumbed intuition induces your belief that you can perturb us, pray tell? But here we are. Welcome to Nine The Last Resort. Nine The Last Resort was developed by Tribeca Interactive, part of the larger Tribeca Enterprises, a company co-founded by actor Robert De Niro. And by all accounts, he was pretty active in the planning stages of this game. He also used his Hollywood weight to sign a pretty impressive list of voice talent to work on Nine. Tribeca Interactive was active only for one year and Nine The Last Resort was their only game. It was conceived as a star-studded tour de force of interactive software, a big-budget artistic endeavor that would push the point-and-click adventure genre to new heights. Unfortunately, it was released in 1996, well past the heyday and commercial viability of point-and-click adventure games on PC. Doom had come. The game. And I guess, yeah, that spelled Doom for the point-and-click genre too. At least for a time. 3D graphics were all the rage. Video game development and gamers' tastes were moving in different directions. Nine also had high system requirements, and it was called Nine, a title that perfectly fits the game's narrative, but is not the most marketable thing they could have come up with. In any case, not even the stellar voice cast and amazing artwork by Mark Ryden could save Nine from commercial failure. And so it would be Robert De Niro's first and only foray into the world of video games. Strangely enough, I can't find much else about the development of the game. Beyond this footage I'm showing of a Los Angeles news report from 96, there's just not much out there on its development history. If anyone knows something more, leave a comment. But anyway, Nine still exists and is still playable on modern systems thanks to a website called The Collection Chamber. They have a huge depository of abandoned games, fully packaged with pre-configured versions of DOSPOX to run each game. There's a link in the description below if you want to check them out. We're gonna dig deep into this adventure gaming oddity, but before I do, I want to give a special thanks to the Dungeon Dwellers who support this channel on Patreon, and through YouTube memberships. If you'd like to join them, stick around until the end of the video to find out how. In his last will and testament, your distant uncle, Thurston Last, get it? His last name is Last, and it's called The Last Resort. Gotta love a good pun. Anyway, Uncle Thurston bequeaths his estate to you, a resort on the tropical island of Era, where artists of all kinds once came to find inspiration and re-harness their muses. This isn't just a turn of phrase, either. There are actually nine muses who live at the last resort. The resort used to be quite popular, but in recent years has fallen into disrepair. The huge estate has many machines and contraptions within, meant to set artists' imaginations alight. But someone, or something, has been tampering with these machines and messing with the muses. So it's up to you to stop this and uncover the secrets of the last resort to restore it to its former glory. If you track down a physical copy of the game, and a used complete set will only set you back about 40 or 50 US dollars, so it's not too bad. But you get some neat extras that flesh out the narrative and actually contain some hints to solving some of the puzzles in the game itself. First, there's a brochure advertising the last resort and all of its luxuries, as well as a postcard. And these two things are just cool additional items. The real treat is the last will of Thurston Last, in all its handwritten glory. This item is actually essential to being able to play the game. So, let's take a closer look. <clears throat> the last will and testament of Thurston Last. I, Thurston Last, of the island of Arrow, latitude 27 south, longitude 153 west, do make and publish this, my last will and testament. Though I do so in haste, with the sound of drums pounding deafeningly in my ears, note, I must fix that boiler. Let no other documents supersede that which is written hereupon. Let the reader beware of that which has transpired, the attacks, the ringing, and the invisible doors into creative satisfaction that must be reopened. I do not have the strength. First. I give, devise, and bequeath to my closest living relative, whomever that may be as judged by my lawyer at Levine and Levine, the deed and title to the last resort, and all its property therein. It shall in no way fall into the hands of the twins. Their toxicity, though delicious and reassuring, is not alone satisfying. Remember these, and all other notations. Second, to Salty, my trustworthy servant, I give you your place in the last resort, to help with the care of the machines therein. Keep up the soundware, my good friend. 
Third, the drums have stopped. However, my works stand on their own. Beware of the false temple that has been built, formed from the sweat of wine, women, and song. Fourth, to Isadora, my siren of riddle. Please help those that dance at your feet, paying tribute to strict interpretations of house lore. We must keep the rats at bay. Fifth, Godspeed to Charlie, play fast and dirty. I give you care of the tools in the shed. Sixth, I hereby revoke all the wills by me heretofore made. Let all eyes link on this tapestry of tribute. Those illiterate fiends are looking for the notes to play. Don't let those fall into their hands. In testimony whereof and hereunto subscribe my name at the island of Era, the 21st day of April, in the year of our muse 1996. Sound has stopped. Soon only the deaf will be able to hear. Thurston last. So there's also a code to open something written here at the bottom, as well as an additional note that copies have been sent to Salty, Isadora, and the Muses, Drum God, Lucille, Aura, Charlie, T-Bear, Voodoo Man, Mr. Bones, and the Twins, though their names have been crossed out. Also, interestingly, if you look up the latitude and longitude coordinates that the will gives, you'll find a spot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean among the Cook Islands, just south of French Polynesia, but no island exists there. You'll need the code written in the will to actually enter the last resort in-game. There's also an alternate door code that's sort of like a debugger code that lets you warp around to different sections of the estate, but we'll enter with the one left in the will as the game intended. Upon starting up the game, you'll meet Isadora the fortune teller, voiced by Cher. Greetings from File I.O. Central. What's your pleasure? Starting something new or carrying on something old? She'll be one of our guides as we explore the last resort, so we'll see more of her later. Choosing the new game card shows us the same image of the last resort as seen on the postcard packed with the game, a pristine, tropical escape. But clicking on it reveals its current form, twisted and overgrown. This may be the false temple that Thurston refers to in his will. Clicking on the postcard sends us straight to the front door. Knocking summons Salty, the caretaker, voiced by Jim Belushi. <laughs> Yeah? What do you want? What's that? You're who? Yeah, and I'm the prom queen and there's seven dwarfs. Look, kid, orders are nobody gets it. If you're for real, let's see some proof. You got that lawyer letter on you? Entering the code with the dashes, don't forget the dashes, opens the door and we're immediately greeted by the toxic twins, two of the nine muses, voiced by Steven Tyler and Steve Perry of Aerosmith. You are the interloper in our dwelling. Comprehend? <laughs> Upon throwing the lever and opening the gate, we hear the voice of our uncle, Thurston Last, played by Christopher Reeve. My legacy has crossed paths with the twins once too often. We cannot lose the new generation. With my monocle, you'll be able to see beyond this house into the primal soup of man's imagination. Reaching for the monocle has us falling down the stairs and being accosted by the toxic twins who steal it from us. We are compelled to remove that from your grasp. Quick, quick, quick! Divest the hairy carrion of their game! Wrench their contemptible hindquarters for bloody good measure! Apparently the Toxic Twins have been causing trouble for the rest of the Muses, and have stolen the components to the Muse Machine in the Last Resort, so we'll need to get the pieces back and evade their meddling. The lobby acts as the central hub of the game. Filled with different contraptions and oddities, there are several clues to be found around here for later puzzles, so exploring this area thoroughly is essential. There are some levers to pull, records on the walls, portraits to gawk at, an organ you can play, whatever the hell this thing is. The art in Nine is one of its best aspects. Mark Ryden, a dude dubbed the godfather of pop surrealism, did the artwork here, and he's fairly well known for his outlandish paintings and designs. In fact, his most recent exhibition was a set of surreal Barbie dolls endorsed by Mattel. So that's pretty cool. 
And yeah, Nine The Last Resort just bleeds this fantastical style all over everything. It's a treat to wander around and see what the different parts of the estate will look like, and what strange characters you'll run into next. This style and ambiance is helped along by Marco D'Ambrosio's excellent, albeit minimalist, soundtrack. There are ethereal, atmospheric moments, like in the very beginning. or the slightly unsettling Twilight Zone-esque theme of the Tapestry Room. As well as the droney, spaced-out sounds of the chasm. The music helps set the tone, but the real stars are the sound effects and incidental noises that resonate in certain areas. It goes without saying that the voice acting is top-notch as well, and not only for the stars of the game that I've already mentioned, but there are several other veteran voice actors giving life to the other characters in the game. You're after the bastard duo, no? I hope you nail a man. Yo, pal, Charlie's the name. Up for some slut car action? You helped me regain composure. I'm in harmony with nature again. Thanks. You know, you're cool. Back to the lobby, under the stairs is a coin, and if you drop it into Isadora's box, she'll give you some cryptic hints that may or may not be useful as we uncover and explore more of the estate. You can also press Control M or Command M if you're playing on Mac to summon Isadora. This is how you save and load your game, but beyond that, Isadora has a lot to say. Allow me to usher you into the place we call File I.O. You know, where all your games are saved and stuff. Oswald did not act alone. That's it, mouse pusher. I'm always saving for you. You don't call, you don't write. Most of it is just for flavor, though. So long, user. Now, if you remember from the will, Uncle Thurston mentions needing to fix the boiler. So you'll need to open up the controls by replacing a missing vinyl record, fuel up the boiler, and fiddle with the buttons and levers to get it running again. By the way, Nine is a game that can only be completed with careful note-taking, unless you have some kind of photographic memory. So either take a bunch of screenshots or pull out an actual notebook. There are symbols to decode, patterns to match, and other minor details that will become important later. Make sure you note down anything you find in the lobby. The track number, asterisked on the back of this record jacket, the shape of the guitar part behind this portrait, the drawings inside this fun with music book, everything. This can be a fairly challenging game, and many of the clues and solutions to puzzles are randomized, so just looking up a walkthrough when you get stuck will only help to point you in the right direction for certain clues. The puzzles in the game aren't only about collecting items either. In fact, instead of having an inventory and having to rifle through the items you've collected trying to figure out what goes where, like in most other point-and-click games, in 9 you can only hold one item at a time. A lot of the puzzles here are memory or skill-based mini-games that you'll need to complete to progress. 9 definitely requires more of you than most point-and-click adventures, which is a good thing. Exploring the last resort and encountering the different puzzles feels alien. It reminds me a lot of Myst, where at first things seem very obtuse and foreign, but everything works on its own internal logic, and I love this kind of design. It makes you feel like you're discovering a new world. We need to play the organ music shown in the Fun With Music book to move past the lobby, which is simple enough, just play the notes in order. But this is actually the first piece to an even larger puzzle that spans most of the game. Eventually will be decoding this entire keyboard and playing several pieces of music on it to advance. This is the central puzzle of the estate, but for now we only have these eight notes to work with. It's probably a good idea to draw out the 24 organ keys and write down the symbols that align with this opening melody. Playing it correctly will allow you to pass the guardians blocking the path on the left side of the lobby, and now we can enter the drum room. Hey man, check out your drums and hit the red button when you're ready. Much like the lobby, there are several things to do in here, and clues for the larger organ-playing puzzle. But to continue onward, we'll need to complete a task from the Drum God, another of the Nine Muses. 
You need to play Simon Says with this drum machine, following along with the drum god's rhythms. If you mess up, you can try again, but eventually there will be six sequences you need to copy. Completing the sequences will gain the drum god's trust, and he'll give us a maraca. That was killer, man. Anytime you want to jam it, my friend, you come to me. I give you this maraca now, my friend. Remember, we can only hold one item at a time, so what the hell do we do with this? Well, back in the lobby and up a ladder on the east side of the room, there's a door blocked by a memory game. Each of the 48 squares on this design has a sound effect attached to it, and you'll need to match all 24 sounds to be able to pass through the door. This can take a while depending on how good you are at memory and sound games. <laughs> As you've probably noticed, sound and memory play a huge part in the puzzles of The Last Resort, so if this isn't your thing, you're not going to have a good time. Beyond this door is a black void of a room with a single catwalk that leads to a strange device. Check the back of the door for a blueprint for something called the Muse Machine. There are instructions for where to place several missing pieces, such as a monocle, which was stolen from us when we first entered the estate, a tuning fork, a spark plug, a vacuum tube, and a maraca. Aha! Place the maraca in the correct spot inside the Muse Machine, and we'll hear from Uncle Thurston. It looks like some congratulations are in order. The first piece is in place. There's nothing else to do here until we recover the other four components to the Muse Machine. So back to the Drum God room and rearrange these masks on the wall. But be quick about it, because they like to jump around on you and mess up the order. After that, you'll get a set of faces and colors. Note that down, because in the next room, we'll have to input those into a machine, which will reward us with a gear. And explore this little hallway area for another guitar part. When we try to enter the doors here, Salty stops us. Whoa! Stay out of there, kid! This one's mine! He'll kick your butt so bad it'll take years before you can sit down! Get out of my way! We can't proceed any further, so it's back to the lobby. I think this is a good spot to break for spoilers. I'm not going to spoil all the puzzles in the game, but I will be talking about a lot of them. So if you'd like to try this game out and attempt to figure things out on your own, skip to this time, or use the chapter select. If not, let's continue on and explore all the weirdness 9 The Last Resort has to offer. So we need to head to the second floor, but there's a pesky conveyor belt moving in the opposite direction, blocking our way forward. Luckily, we're holding a gear, which can be placed in this pillar to reverse the movement. Up on the second floor, there are several doors and objects to interact with. You can find the last guitar part hiding inside a microwave that's just sitting out in the open. We'll also come across our first sheet of organ music. This is important, and we can't take it with us, so you know the drill. Either copy it all down in a notebook, or take a screenshot. We can try to enter the door to the garage, but some kind of monster blocks our path. There's a record player in the hallway, and if you took note of the track number to the song Dogfight from the record in the lobby, you can set it to that song and play it. Yeah, oh, that's it, kid! That's what I've been looking for! Yes, yes! Thanks, kid! Thanks a bunch! Stand back and watch how it's done! This pumps up Salty, who flies off to do battle with the other plane beyond the wooden doors we couldn't pass earlier. So let's head back and see the results of that. Since the floor is now moving in the opposite direction, we'll need to take the elevator back down to the lobby. Just don't think that you did it by yourself, kid! Looks like Salty took care of things, so now we can enter the tapestry room. Aura is the muse in control of this room, and we never see her directly, but we hear her voice as we explore this area, and she gives a good deal of hints for how to solve some of the puzzles in here, but all her advice is pretty cryptic. Pardon me. I am known as Aura. You may call me Aura, and I am most grateful for your assistance. The toxic twofold desire my tube, which I have conscientiously concealed. They defy depravity, you realize. 
Each tapestry hides something, and there are lots of things to take note of here. We also need to match up all the guitar parts we've been finding to open the way through this tapestry. Moving the eyeballs in the room to look at the throne by using these controls, and then sitting on the throne, will reveal the key to decoding the Wheel of Fortune. These symbols are related to the organ puzzle in the lobby, so once you've spun the wheel to the correct position, snap a photo or copy it down. You get past this cat tapestry by feeding it a scrap of a mouse tapestry. Yeah, that's something. And this allows access to the chasm, a spaced out area of floating islands. Navigating this place takes a bit of getting used to, and it's a good idea to try to draw out a map, because we'll be returning here a few times. On this first trip, we can grab the vacuum tube from a case behind the bar. This is the second piece of the Muse machine. Again, we can only hold one item at a time, so we need to go drop that off before we can do anything else here. After doing that, and returning to the chasm, we meet Mr. Bones. He's another one of the Muses. They took my soul, friend! My last bottle of sweet rot gut. I guess you don't give a hoot what I got ya! <laughs> Finding Mr. Bones' booze and returning it to him will gain his trust, and he'll give us one of his bones. That's the ticket, buddy! Oh, that's the way! Best of luck! You'll need it where you're headed! Now get lost! We can use this to bypass the dog creature on the way to the garage on the second floor. Here we meet yet another muse, the robot Charlie. Yo, pal, Charlie's the name. Up for some slot car action? He likes to race slot cars, so you'll need to race against him before he'll give up the key to the tool shed that you need. You get a choice of four different cars, and your first thought will probably be to choose the fastest one makes sense. And you can do that, but you're gonna have a rough time, and we'll probably crash. You actually want the Quarkmobile, which is the slowest car, but here's the thing. All you need to do is hold down the accelerator, and you'll win. Choosing the other cars, you'll need to finesse your way around turns, and it's a huge pain in the ass controlling these things. So just pick the slow one, hold down left mouse, and win to get the key to the tool shed. Hey! It came out of cruise control! My compliments! Must have neglected your, uh, inherent driving prowess. You better check my tool shed, cause you'll need a few spare parts. But look out for the crossway. Inside, you'll find a spark plug, the third component to the music machine. There's also a gear, but we'll come back for that. An organ music guide is taped to the inside of the cabinet, too. This won't make a whole lot of sense right now, but definitely make a note of it, because it's an important clue to figuring out how to actually play the organ in the lobby. There's another sheet of organ music in one of the drawers around the garage, so be sure to check that out as well. Return the spark plug to the Muse machine and go back to the garage for the gear. We'll be taking this back to the chasm. On one of the islands, there's a large skull and a strange contraption on the floor. Opening it up reveals a bunch of gears with one missing. So we can place the one we're holding inside, and now we need to align all four gears so that 12 pink dots show through in the center. You can turn the gears clockwise or counterclockwise when they're outside of the center, then push them into place. Once you've revealed all 12 dots, the giant skull's mouth will open slightly, and you can enter it to access the Dali room. This is a surreal little space. We need to play this game where we have to drop a ball from the top to the bottom, but these pieces only move in certain ways, so you'll need to find the correct path down. Success lets you see the last sheet of organ music, and now we have all the necessary clues to figuring out how to play the organ in the lobby, but we'll get to that in a bit. There's a guitar in a case sitting on a chair over here, but she won't come out until you find her missing G string. Get it? The double defectives defected with my G string. Make it two against two and snatch it back for me. Then, maybe I'll come out for you. The G-string is back in the bar area of the chasm, so grab that and return to the Dolly room to give it to her. And now another of the muses, Lucille, will make her appearance. Took you long enough, honey. Just stay loose while I slide into this. Mm hmm. 
need the complete tonal range to feel whole, but the twins jerked me way out of alignment. Could you do a girl a big favor and tune me? So you need to put her back into playing order. Behind one of the tapestries in the tapestry room, there was a guitar book showing the correct tunings for each string. But pay attention, because Lucille is facing away from you, so the correct tunings from the book need to be mirrored, as if the puzzles in this game weren't already confusing enough. What, am I in dry dock here? You'd better hit the books. Clueless won't cut it here. So set the tuner to the correct note for each string and fiddle with Lucille's tuning pegs, and this whole part gets a bit suggestive, to say the least. Don't push so hard! Mmm, I'm a very sensitive instrument. You just found one of my musical pressure points. Eureka! Fresno! You did it! You helped me regain composure. I'm in harmony with nature again. Thanks. You know, you're cool. Here, it's yours. Au revoir, and don't take any cheap wooden picks. Once she's tuned and satisfied, <laughs> she'll give you the tuning fork. Head back to the Muse Machine and place that. And now, now it's time to play the organ. <laughs> oh man, this is such a confusing puzzle, even with all the clues. I'm going to spoil this solution, so just be warned if you're still watching and are sort of thinking you might want to play this game. So, here we go. If you took my advice earlier and drew out the keyboard, we already know eight of the notes from playing the melody from the book on top of the organ. And this was what opened the path to the drum god's room near the beginning of the game. Now, with the Wheel of Fortune decoded, we can see the symbols for the rest of the keys. From left to right, each key aligns with a letter of the alphabet. But we need to leave out letters M and R, because the Wheel of Fortune doesn't have those letters. I don't know why it's M. I thought leaving out L would be more appropriate because, you know, last resort, the initials. And that symbol is at the top of a lot of the sheet music, but whatever. Anyway, you can write in all the symbols as they correspond to each key. So now that we figured out the keyboard, we need to decipher the rest of the stuff on the sheet music. For the first sheet that we found on the second floor hallway, there's a totem with a symbol in the middle. This is the first note of the melody. Below that, there's a square with a diagonal half shaded in. But you don't need to worry about this part just yet. There's also a rectangle at the bottom with five circles. The second circle from the left is colored in. And that looks an awful lot like the levers on the keyboard of the organ. So this first one is easy enough. Pull the second lever and just play the four keys that correspond with the symbols. Doing this correctly will make a coin appear in one of the hands of the monkey atop the organ. We need four coins to proceed, but this is going to get more complicated with each sheet of organ music. For the second one that we found, in the tapestry room, we set the first lever, and play the letters that each key corresponds to. Remember, the organ goes from A to Z, omitting M and R. So all we need to do is play those keys, and another coin appears. <laughs> But take note of the fact that the square on the bottom of the totem is colored in differently, and there are arrows in between each letter. These two things will be needed for figuring out how to play the last two sheets of music. The third one, from the garage, is missing all but the first note. To figure out what notes to play, we'll need to decipher the organ guide that we found in the garage. There are graphs here showing all of the different ways the squares on the bottom of the totem can be shaded in, and these correspond to the movements you'll need to make to find the right keys. For the third sheet music, we start on U and move three spaces to the left to find the R key. That's our second note. Next, we'll have to look at all the sheets of organ music and fill in the graphs with the different number of movements between each note. And this will correspond with each differently shaded square on the bottom of the totem. Once we do that, we can figure out the last two notes to play by moving a certain number of keys, either left or right, depending on the pattern of the shaded square and how it aligns with our graphs. <laughs> And if you think this is complicated, wait until the last one. The final sheet music has two totems. The one on the left has two letters. The one on the right looks like the totems from the previous sheets of music, but the color of the letter is different. On all the other sheets, the letter was yellow. This time, it's blue. Also notice the sequence is circled in blue with a number two written near it. So what does that mean? It means that blue notes need to be played twice and red notes need to be played four times. How did I figure that out? 
I looked up a fucking guide. I'm not proud, but I spent over an hour figuring out just the other three sheets of organ music, and I was totally stumped here on this last one. It's ridiculous. I would love to hear from people who played this game back in the day and didn't use a guide. Like, how the hell did you figure this shit out? Anyway, play the C key twice, the A key four times, figure out the missing notes by looking at the square, the graphs, and the number of movements between each key, and don't forget to play that four note sequence twice. <laughs> After all of that, you'll be rewarded with the last coin. Now, if all of this wasn't enough to drive you batty, when I took the last coin to try to put it into Isadora's box, the game kept crashing. You need to give her the coin so that you can get a key to the attic, but every time I put the coin in, the game would crash. One time, I got past that and got her to give me the key, but then it crashed after that. I was about ready to just give up here and scrap the whole video, but then I just decided to try a different coin, and it worked. So, okay. I mean, it's not really the game's fault. This is what I get for waiting over 25 years to play this game and trying to do it through an emulator. But hey, we gotta do what we gotta do. So long, user. So, up to the second floor and unlock the door to the attic. In here, we need to cross this sinister game board, and you just need to move quickly as the pieces move out of your way. Otherwise, you'll be sent back. On the other side, we meet T-Bear, another muse, who likes to spout nonsense, and I could honestly sit here and listen to him all day. I don't plan to hibernate till I'm fully grown. There's a bee up my nose. Teeth are bad for honey. <laughs> I could go with a little hand fishing right now. <laughs> Where's a tree to scratch your back when you need one? <laughs> Mine is the sole earth species named by a gap-toothed conservationist warmongering chief executive. In his toy box is a missing piece for the elevator panel, and placing the piece will activate the elevator, and now we can head down to the basement. Boy, I hate this part. Figuring out the organ was head scratching, but at least you could look up a solution. Here, it's just pure skill. You get a revolver with six shots and you have to shoot 50 of these rat targets that appear randomly around the room. And you have to be precise. You can't hit the rat anywhere else but this tiny target where it doesn't count. There's a string of Christmas lights lining the walls and a light will turn on for every rat you shoot. Gold rats are worth five, but good luck hitting those. In all the times I had to redo this part, I only ever hit one gold rat. So this sounds tedious. But what makes it frustrating is that every once in a while, a real rat will walk out of this tunnel in the back. They take four shots to kill, and if it reaches you before you can kill it, it will shove you back in the elevator, and you have to restart the whole minigame again. Doesn't matter how many rats you've hit up until that point. There are no checkpoints. Thanks, Robert De Niro. I had to turn my mouse sensitivity down to get anywhere in this part, and it was still a ball ache. Apparently, you can hold control, and the revolver will turn into a machine gun clip that holds 50 rounds for a short time, but I couldn't get that to work, so I had to use the revolver the whole time. And sometimes, shots would just miss the real rat if I fired too quickly, and it was fucking miserable. I finally did it by just keeping my mouse cursor hovering over the left side of the screen and waiting. Though it did seem like the game knew where your mouse was, so if you tried to just leave it on a particular spot and wait for a rat to appear, it would never show up there. The rats also get faster as this goes on, and more real rats start appearing. At a certain point for me though, the real rats just stop showing up. I don't know if I just got lucky, or the game showed me mercy because of how many times I had to redo this section, but I finally made it through. You can bet after the game crashing on me with the organ coin bit, I was saving frantically after finishing this part. In the tunnel beyond, there's a desk with a folded up blueprint, and inside is the monocle that we saw in the very beginning of the game. And with that, we've recovered the final piece of the Muse machine. This is it. It's all I could have hoped for. Dance the last dance?
and we do signify last. <laughs> Descend to our level, oh exalted wimp! <laughs> Was that the plan the whole time? There's no way back to the estate, so the only thing to do is climb down the wreckage to the jungle outside. There's a gondola waiting, and we can ride it over to a tent, which looks like the place where Thurston took refuge. There's another organ here, and the voodoo man, the last muse, will appear and show us five different melodies that we need to play. You have experienced much, my friend, yet your greatest experience lies ahead. You must value all of your stored experiences, for they will guide you in your continued success. These need to be figured out on the fly by using the organ playing guides that we figured out earlier. It's stressful. You're only given three chances to get the sequences correct. If you mess up, you lose. I see I have been overly optimistic. I thought I was stronger than the Twins' chaos. I made my machine too powerful. It was so beautiful for a little while, until it was wrenched out of my hands. I am the guilty one. You have helped the abomination. The Twins are now tripled. The Muses are mutilated. You are a traitor to the last legacy, trapped amongst the cannibals forever. Well, shit. So anyway, get through all the sequences, and then the last note you need to play doesn't exist, the M key. So you need to hold down the L and N keys. Your reward for completing this is finally capturing the twins, but more importantly, it's the dulcet tones of Jim Belushi's singing. Come along, right here with me, cause there's a place you gotta be. Come right on back here to the lobby, you gotta hear our finale. Welcome, our guests right here, I helped them trap the some. I tell you it was gruesome. Hail, hail, let's give out a cheer. The Muse Machine is back in here, yeah! Because of your courage, all of us feel whole again. And thanks to your spirit, this place is home again. Because you know, beyond a doubt, this guy just couldn't do without. All the help I came across with in a toxic twin blowout. <laughs> oh, kid, a softy boy. We know what you're saying, it don't need translating. Let's beat the drums for joy. Let's restart begin again. Ooh, make it funky. All right, kid, you got it, yeah. You've really done it, honey. Look what you've done. Kick-started something grand. Where others crapped out big time, you've done it right. You drew the winning hand. Remember old Thurston's last wish to make this place brimming with art reborn. Now don't be too modest, you've won our esteem. Respect and bodice, a, a hero, hero to, to the man don't think that you did it by yourself, kid. Thanks, Robert De Niro. Nine The Last Resort is a unique point-and-click adventure, with a reliance on memory, decoding, and reflexes, as opposed to just collecting items and figuring out where and when to use them. Although there's a bit of that, too. The art, the music, the atmosphere, the voice work, it's all amazing. 
It's a monumental task figuring out the central puzzle of the game, and there are a few frustrating bits along the way. But overall, it's a great experience. It's pretty sad that this game just came out too late to capitalize on the commercial popularity of adventure games. If Nine could have released like three years earlier, we might have seen Robert De Niro and Tribeca Interactive do more. But as it stands, Nine is a singular experience, and one that's well worth looking into. Just don't think that you did it by yourself, kid. And that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel if you haven't, all those things really help me out. If you'd like to help out even more and become a dungeon dweller, you can hit the join button on the page to become a YouTube member, or you can click the Patreon link in the video description to become a patron. Everybody gets to watch videos a day or two before they go public on YouTube, and if you donate $5 or more, you get your name read out loud at the end of videos like these Dungeon Architects. Benefer94 Enid McInnes Goats and Goblins, Half HP, High Food Court, Izzy Lexus, Kyowa, Nekat the Brave, Stefano Urenya, Tentabat, and Tony Lee, as well as these dungeon connoisseurs, Anjin01, Cherm Slurm, Chiral Spiral, Crippler Jones, David Carr, Dazed Clockwork, Dika Dico, Glitter Throat, Indigo Happy, Irregular Rob, Gemma, Joshua Weber, Mr. Independent, Nicholas Polstar, Noel the Monkey, Old Dead Lemons, Please Keep Making Videos, Pretty Cody, Rez, Ribbon Black, Samuel Pandiangan, Samurai 85X, Solar, True Axiom, Tuesday Twin, Warrior Song, Where Am I, Help, and Zach Diedrich. Thank you all for your support. And thank you for watching. Sorry this one took so long. Uh, I got COVID over New Year's and that just knocked me out for like a week. But I'm better now and things are back on track so it won't be as long of a wait for the next one. So until then, Nine, The Last Resort. Check it out. Dungeon Chill, out. What you have there must be hot. The Double Dilemma wanted pretty bad. I don't plan to hibernate till I'm fully grown! There's a bee up my nose!